The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to the Pharisees and the scribes. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go out after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. My dear friends, the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel blot out our sins. My dear friends, joyful, joyful. (laughs) We celebrate today the sacred heart of Jesus. We celebrate today divine love. We're really celebrating divine love today. Uh, We have other words for it. There's a lot of words we have for it. You'll hear the word charity after the Latin, especially in the prayers of the Mass. You'll hear about charity. Or the Greek word agape, you might hear that word sometimes about divine love. Uh, Sometimes the Hebrew word chesed, you might hear that, which is loving kindness or divine mercy. All these words are about divine love. And that's what we're celebrating today. That's what we're participating in at this Holy Mass. That's what we're meditating on today, divine love. And it's really at the heart of everything it means to be Christian, pun intended. (laughs) It's at the heart of everything that it means to be a Christian in this world, is divine love. Uh, First of all, it answers uh, every question of why that we might have. Why did God the Father create everything out of love? Why did Jesus empty himself and choose to become a human person and live among us out of love? Why did Jesus spend 30 years of obedience to Joseph and Mary out of love? Why did Jesus suffer and die on the cross out of love? Why did Jesus descend into the dead and rescue all the people that were waiting for him for centuries out of love? Why did Jesus resurrect and ascend into heaven out of love? Why did Jesus and and the Father send the Holy Spirit into the world to draw all people to himself out of love? Why is the Holy Spirit still active right now in my life and in your life and in the work of the church and the world? Out of love. Love answers everything. Love answers everything. Notice the readings as Trinitarian love. Father, Son, and Spirit are listed in the readings today. It's a one God and three persons. This love of the Trinity spills into our life, our whole lives, our participation in this divine love. Love is the answer for what is the purpose of my life. Uh, it's divine love. We are, we are made to be in union with God, to be brought into union with another person. That is love. And we are made to be in union with God. That's the purpose of our whole life. That's why we do everything in the Catholic Church. Why do we have Mass? To be in union with God, out of love. Why do we have the sacraments? To be in union with God, out of love. Why do we read the Bible? to be in union with God, in love. Love answers to the, like the four, excuse me, the five questions that every person must ask in this world. Where do I come from? Where am I going? How am I going to get there? What's the meaning and the purpose of my life? How should I live my life? Love answers all those questions. We come from love. We return to love. We get there by love purpose of meaning of our life is to love and the way we live our life is to be a loving person. Love, this divine love that we're talking about today and celebrating today, it answers everything. Right? Even when Jesus summed up our whole life in one sentence, being the genius that he is, 
when he summed up our life. What's the purpose of life? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. There, that's your life in one sentence. Can anybody get that confused? Anybody not know what to do? Uh, the fam most famous passage in the Bible for our time today is about love too, John 3.16. Thanks to football games. <laughs> God so loved the world that he sent his only son that all who believe in him may not suffer damnation but might have eternal life. There it is, love again. We have St. Thomas Aquinas' favorite scripture passage today too. It's through the, the, God has poured his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Again, that has so much to do with our very life. So what is there? I mean, if the Beatles had been theologians, they would have got it right. All you need is love. All there is is love. The purpose of our life is love. Okay, so that's the question. What, what then, Father Simon, what does it mean to love? What does it mean to love another person? What does it mean to love God? That's a fair question. What is it? I think the medieval maxim that's so valuable is, has a thing acts, so it is. Has a thing acts, so it is. So we want to learn about love by looking how someone acts. And that is by looking at Jesus on the cross. There's the book of love. There's what love is. Look at Jesus on the cross. I think he's over here in this chapel. Look at him on the cross. What do we see there? We see sacrifice. We see commitment. We see vulnerability. We see putting the other person first. We see surrender. We see trust. I mean, you could meditate on this all day today. Look at the cross to teach you about love. And yet, God has done all this. God does all this. God pours himself out. God enters into us at the Holy Eucharist here out of love, pours his love into our heart. God has done everything so that we would love him back, so that we would surrender our will and follow his will, and yet we run. We run from God. I did it for 36 years. Ran, 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 till I finally surrendered. I close with a poem that I learned from uh, Venerable Fulton J. Sheen about running from God and finally surrendering to his love. I slipped his fingers, I escaped his feet, I ran and hid for him I feared to meet. One day I passed him fettered on a tree. He turned his head and beckoned me. Neither by speed nor strength could he prevail. Each hand and foot was pinioned by a nail. He could not run or grasp me if he tried. But with those eyes he bid me reach his side. And so I said, for pity's sake, I'll set you free. Nay, nay, he said, but pick up your cross and follow me. For its way is easy and its burden is light for those who grasp it tight. And so I followed him who could not move, an uncaught captive in the hands of love.